Hello everyone. Um, today I wanted to show show y'all how to um, use this command, the export to native. And this is what you're going to use when you have your your horizontal and vertical geometry created. And what this does is it exports your alignment to a GPK file which is um, a file that contains and stores all your alignments and we need to do this um, because we want um, the most updated information in the GPK so that we're able to display um, that information in our plan and profile sheets and it is a it is a different workflow than Open Roads Designer, um, which is the, the newer software. But if we're using Power Geopack Select Series 4, then, then you are going to need to use, use the workflow that I'm going to show you. Um, so first of all, let's, let's try to see what happens when we, when we use this command for this alignment. Um, so if you can see our alignment, it's a complex element and it has a profile so let's let's uh, use the export to native and let's see what happens so I'm going to locate my elements and you see it gives me this error the given paths format is not supported and then here's where your GPK um, would be showing and you would click on the GPK and then hit OK and then it would it would store but there's some settings that need to be um, that need to be created and some files that need to be created before we're able to see the GPK here and that's what I'm going to show you how to do next so if we go to Geopack road project manager then this is the dialog box that um, that you'll need to uh, come into when you're starting a new project um, because this is how this is how this command knows where where your GPK is located so the first step you're going to need to do is go to projects and new and we'll give this a name we'll just call it um, new project and then here you're going to select the working directory which is the path of where your um, GPK is located so in this case, I'm working on my desktop and I have this folder here and here's the segment that this um, GPK is going to be used for. So I'll do the drop down here and I'm actually going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it Geopack. And then I'm going to have this um, selected geopack folder and I'm going to hit OK. So now we see that this is our working directory and this is where our GPK is going to be uh, located. So if we go to select we see that there is no GPK files um, in this working directory location. So if we were to check my um, Explorer, Windows Explorer and go to GPK we see there's nothing in here because um, because I just created the the folder and there's there's nothing in there. So, but if we come here, um, the job number is how the um, GPKs are named. So if we just give this an arbitrary number, um, we can say 05, and then we hit select, or we just hit OK. It's going to ask, okay, so this is a problem here. So you see, this is looking for 
this is looking in project wise so this is not what I want to do and this this is um, one of the problems that can arise when doing this so in this case I do not want to make a GPK in project wise for another project so I'm going to hit no and I'm going to um, right click and go to user preferences and I'm going to make sure that my Kogo preferences are also um, mapped to the same working directory as the uh, as the file that we just created. So I can click the magnifying glass, and I'll come to this geopack and hit OK. And then in this case, I'm just going to copy and paste to the Kogo input and Kogo output. and then I'm going to hit OK and now when I hit OK it's going to ask me um, or it's going to say that uh, in this location the the GPK job 05 is not found do you want to create it and then we'll say yes so now when I export to native I'm going to use this command I look at my elements that I want to be exported. I'll reset, which is right, right click, and now we see that it's there. So now, if we hit OK, then it loads, and then we go to Geopack Road Geometry Coordinate Geometry. Um, now we can come here to our um, to our elements and our chains and we notice that we have a horizontal alignment or a chain and we can we can describe this so um, describing it just means it gives you all this all this pertinent information about the horizontal alignment um, and there's the same thing for profiles which so these are the profiles that were inside of the of my horizontal alignment so if I print this PRM 652-2A, if I load it, if I describe it, then it's going to show me all this VPI information, low point, high point, grades, K values, and, and everything. So another cool, um, cool trick is to, if you go to element profile, and you go to elevation then you can select the profile and you select the station um, and then if you do compute then it'll give you that elevation and it'll um, tell you if it's on a curve or if it's on a tangent so these are these are pretty useful um, whether you're a roadway engineer whether you're a drainage engineer, bridge engineer. If you know how to do this and you know what's um, if you know what's happening with your with your profile and your horizontal geometry, then this can give you a lot of information that that you'll need. Um, and one last thing is the reason the reason we have um, we have more profiles in in this um, than chains is because if we if we open our horizontal alignment and go to the profile model then we can see that we have this arm 652 
which is the active profile. And then we have these offsets, which is um, something that I was using for design because we, we had a situation where we needed um, we needed to use these offsets. So that's the reason why we have, if you remember in um, our Koga, we had one, two, three, and four. So that's, that's the reason there. Uh, so if if you as long as you have your 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 active profile and your um, attached to your horizontal, then then it should go to the GPK and you should be able to use that information.